any user needs to create a purchase request. Uh, and this is what the user sees when they first create uh, go to create their request. Now, this is a very simplistic form. Uh, nothing's been added to it yet, and I'll go through that in a minute and how uh, we might add it. But basically, the user is going to first of all they're going to choose the department that they're assigned to that they're working under, and when they go to buy something, they, they'll click on and they'll get a drop down list of all of the departments that are available to them. So in this case. We were only assigned administration, so I'll click on administration, and that's uh, the purchase order I'm uh, or the purchase that I'm buying for. Now, like I said before in other videos, uh, when uh, um, when I choose administration, then I only get the budgets available for administration. In this case, all the budgets that we've got in this system are available for the administration department, so they all show up. Okay. Uh, then we're going to choose the vendor or the supplier. Uh, now that vendor list can be imported from an Excel spreadsheet or it can be imported through QuickBooks if you use QuickBooks already. Uh, or you can just uh, add them as you go, which some customers do. Uh, you can allow users to create uh, their own vendors if you want to. In that case, when you do allow that, then this new supplier button comes up. Uh, you can fill out the supplier details and that supplier is then available to everybody else. Or you can lock that supplier list down completely so that no one can add their own vendors if you don't want them to. Now there is a third option and that's where you assign somebody with the finance role to be an approver of vendors. So that means that when somebody adds a new supplier or a new vendor, then that uh, uh, that approval goes off to that finance person and then they can decide. So often what that might be, would they, they would check to make sure that the correct tax forms are available and maybe the correct tax numbers are correct, uh, you know, are, are there and everything. And then that way they would be able to make sure that that vendor is within their account system and then they add that vendor and say yes and and that vendor gets added into Procurement Express. So the user is going to choose a vendor, in this case we'll choose Erlingers, um, and they'll fill out line item detail as they go. Now I've added the SKU field, you can take that away if you don't use it, uh, the SKU stock control unit, they can fill out that, like a model number and so on, and then a description, and then a budget, they're going to select a budget for each and every line item, and that's important later on because you may want to buy things from uh, different places where you assign, uh, for different line items, you assign them to different budgets because you want to allocate the spend to different places. They're going to choose a unit price, quantity, a tax rate which you can set up beforehand. This particular account has a lot of different tax rates because they've been pulled over from QuickBooks but you can set up a minimal amount of tax rates too if you want to and it's going to work out the total for you. I'm going to add more line items as you go so you can add more line items in. Now you can fill out any notes here. Uh, those notes will go to the vendor. You can upload any files here. You can attach them or drag drop them in and then you're going to send it off for approval. We'll come to approval in another video. Now one thing about this form is that you can customize it quite a lot um, and quite often I see that customers uh, in different industries customize their forms in very similar ways. Uh, so you customize in a particular way. Uh, you uh, Mainly they, you want to add extra fields to this form so that you're capturing the data that you want to collect from your users. Having your users fill out a form when they do a purchase request, it's a really good time to then to ask them for a bit of extra data about that purchase. So the different things that get asked would be um, if you were in the construction industry, then maybe nearly always you would have a job number that you would need to deal with or that you would need to work on. So maybe you want to put job number in there and you want to save a job number against uh, the purchase order. So you can go back and say, show me everything associated with this particular job number and you can see all the spend against that job number. Now I hope you can see that this form is really, really simple to use and easy and that's really important for your users. If you introduce a system like this to your user base, uh, uh, and your users, you need to make it as simple as possible. If it looks like an accountancy system, then you will receive pushback from your staff uh, because it looks like an accountancy system. But if it's as simple and easy and, uh, and easy to, to use as possible and that they don't have any issues with it when they first pick it up and use it, uh, then you shouldn't get as much pushback as you might do with other systems.